Uh, hi everyone, Mustany Shave Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Blockhead album, The Aux. This is a new LP from prolific East Coast veteran underground hip-hop producer Blockhead, a talented beatsmith who made a name for himself putting together instrumentals for a lot of the greats to come out of the backpack era of the 2000s, be that Murs or Cage or, uh, of Wordle Mega, of Cannibal Ox fame, of course also most notably Aesop Rock, and more recently guys like Open Mike Eagle. He's also been working a lot with Billy Woods, whose Backwoods Records label has become a bit of a home to much of his recent work. He's been dropping instrumental projects, doing numerous beats for Woods and his duo with Elucid Arm and Hammer, and now Blockhead has put out this new LP over here that has a full run of features from all your favorite favorite rap weirdos, from Blockhead's oldest and closest collaborator Aesop Rock, uh, to dudes like Despot and Quelly Chris and the Koreatown Oddity, as well as Navy Blue. Woods and Armand Hammer are in the mix too, along with some other faces from the Backwoods roster. Fatboy Sharif, Akai Solo, Shrapnel, and of course we can't forget about Danny Brown and the Bruiser Brigade's Bruiser Wolf. So obviously this is one of those producer albums where a guy like Blockhead will just assemble a bunch of features from uh, an array of artists that he has a rapport with. And sometimes these types of albums tend to be a little shoddy, but Blockhead does have a very specific sound, a great taste as well. So I went into this thing expecting a quality project, even if it was going to be a little all over the place with the wide array of guests. Now, of course, with this thing being a producer album, you do have to kind of give it to the production, the woozy, loose jazz chops and subtle psychedelic keys dripping throughout the mix on AAU tournaments are fantastic. That's a great opener. Also, I'm totally in love with the grimy and bold beats and haunting nocturnal instrumentation on the following The Cella Duel is New. There's actually quite a few instrumentals on this project that go in a very heavy, uh, somewhat dour direction, lighthouse, hater porn, and while this isn't an accurate portrayal of Blockhead's uh, sound and style overall, it's definitely a prevailing vibe on this project and fits in with a lot of the slow, dejected, abstract hip-hop uh, that's been very popular in the underground as of late. But yeah, even the somewhat silly and lovesick track from Bruiser Wolf, Poppy Seeds, is surprisingly spacey, ethereal, and dramatic, especially considering the tone of the lyrics. Maybe something a bit livelier would have been more fitting. I'm also surprised at the instrumental backbone to the closing track, Now That's What I Call a Posse Cut Volume 56, which is way more laid back than I would have expected considering the names coming together on this cut. I mean, it's fine, but it definitely falls short of fireworks. Still, Blockhead's incredible skill does come through on even the darkest and strangest pockets of this record, like on the lumbering cacophony of instrumentation on mastering how to land, which is pretty incredible considering how well Blockhead uh, assembles the chaos on this song and makes it sound organized, even cinematic. Also, 1970s post-apocalyptic skin flick uh, definitely lives up to its title with it being uh, one of the darkest oddities on this entire thing with warped vocals and reverse bits of percussion. Uh, it somehow brings the vibes of a super villainous MF Doom track, uh, but sounds even more villainous. So while these moments are good and are for sure highlights, uh, part of me on this record does admittedly miss Blockhead's quirkier side coming out in a bolder way, which does happen on occasion, like with the very tongue-in-cheek Mississippi feature featuring Aesop Rock, which works off a very odd combination of sounds. Some honking, blurting horns, a Bollywood sample, as well as what sounds like some kind of novelty song teaching people how to spell Mississippi. And Blockhead's for sure showing his more humorous side uh, by having a track from RxK Nephew on this thing, Pink Lemonade, which is an almost five minute track packed with these uh, ridiculous punched in one-liners. Look at the ops, like, I can't get jiggy with this. Also, while I'm mentioning high Highlights. Shout out to the surprisingly tuneful and hopeful number we get with Sad Vampire. Brian Ennell's performance on this track is incredibly passionate, and he brings a super catchy chorus on the track too. Maybe the catchiest 
based on the entire LP. And as far as vibe goes, I feel like <laughs> what we have here miraculously is like a Chance the Rapper song if you could somehow just extract out all the corn. Arm & Hammer also nails down like a really good solid verse, chorus, verse on the track Give Thanks as well. Surprisingly catchy a moment for them. So while there were no huge stinkers on this record for me in the track list and the vast majority of tracks uh, were pretty great, there are moments where I found the track list to be a little too one-dimensional or maybe um, even too mild in its pursuit of moodier vibes, which led to some tracks that frankly just kind of lack a wow factor, be that God is Busy or maybe even Ponzu Sauce. As I referenced earlier, the ending of this whole thing isn't nearly as strong as it could have been too. But even with those shortcomings, overall this is a pretty good record from Blockhead and proves why he continues to be one of the best uh, to ever do it. I'm feeling a, a decent too strong seven, on this one, Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Blockhead, The Ox, forever.